If there's one thing the Unicron trilogy is known for, it's the repaints. Unlike in modern day lines like Siege and Studio Series, where redecos and retools are commonly spotted by Wave 3 at the latest, the three chapters of the Unicron trilogy would show a little restraint until about two thirds of the way through their runs, at which point they'd undergo what's called a subline imprint, where Hasbro would just go balls to the wall with repaint after repaint. With Armada, it was the Unicron battles. With Energon, it was the Powerlinks battles. And with Cybertron, it was Primus Unleashed. With those first two installments, most of the redecos would be upgrades to old characters given a Powerlinks or Energon prefix. With Primus Unleashed, however, the majority of its repaints were new characters, save for those few GTS and Galaxy Force redecos. A lot of these were well received as they breathed new life into the figures they were redecos of, and you'd be hard pressed to find one more well received than the topic of today's video. Welcome to Kit Catastrophe, my name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers Cybertron Deluxe Class Cannonball. This figure came out in 2006 as part of Wave 7 of the Deluxe Assortment, and is a redeco of the Deluxe Class Red Alert from Wave 2. Much like how Crosswise from just a few reviews ago turned into a similar but not quite exact replica of a Bugatti Veyron, Cannonball turns into something resembling a Dodge Magnum, albeit one with a much shorter nose. I've heard some describe this vehicle mode as a hearse, but the fact that he still has Red Alert's siren accoutrements and some tampographs which would be quite distasteful at a funeral leads me to believe otherwise. Sadly, six-year-old me wasn't the kindest to the figure, and as such, the tampographs on Cannonball's doors have been scratched away over time. Considering how the charcoal paint underneath has fared considerably well, I'm half tempted to scratch the rest off just to make it look less messy. A more well-preserved copy would feature a dabbing Katrina on either side. The roof has a Tampograph Scorchers logo on it, which is still preserved on my copy, albeit a little rough around the edges. Otherwise, the paintwork on this figure has aged pretty well, with a nice silver trim running along the bottom of the vehicle, on the rims, and down the middle of the hood, the latter most being flanked by four bright yellow headlights. The exposed head up top is pretty bad, considering it looks far more out of place than it did on Red Alert. I love the shade of purple translucent plastic used for the windows, though covering them up with a charcoal paint to match the base plastic eats up a lot of the paint budget. Those rearmost translucent panels house a secret. Taking Cannonball's included Earth Cyber Planet key and inserting it into the rear of the car causes those panels to spring outward and allow two guns to swing forward. As far as car former conversion schemes go, Cannonball's is pretty unique and interesting. Well, as unique as a redeco can be. The entire front third of the car and the lower half of the rear third coalesce to form the chunkiest calves I've ever seen. The arms unfurl themselves from the central mass, though sometimes I worry about the hinges used to bring Cannonball's shoulders up and to bring the doors out, considering they're made of translucent plastic. The head is on a sliding elevator, which locks in place rather nicely. It won't go back down unless you damn well mean it to. Cybertron Cannonball shows off his pirate heritage by showing off a lot more gold in robot mode. Luckily, I don't think this figure will be susceptible to gold plastic syndrome anytime soon. His gold plastic may be a little metallic and swirly upon close inspection, but to date, I've not seen a single crack appear. I'll update y'all if this statement ends up biting me in the ass someday. That being said, this robot mode looks sick. It's kinda hard to believe he's a redeco of uptight, stodgy Red Alert. He feels entirely different. Not that I'd know, of course, considering I haven't gotten a Red Alert myself. Cannonball's torso feels rather undersized, though this dash of silver on the chest and waist are welcome, as are the sadly thinly applied yellow applications inside the pec venting. The head sculpt is unchanged from Red Alert, though Cannonball features a charcoal paint app over half of his visor that's meant to resemble an eye patch. Like I said during transformation, Cannonball's calves are thick with like at least seven C's. Coupled with the fact that nearly one-sixth of this guy's total mass is in his backpack means that Cannonball is one chunky motherfucker. The CyberKey gimmick is still functional in robot mode, except now the guns point over his shoulders. Inside Cannonball's shins, some tools are stored. The first is a black hammer that Red Alert was always equipped with in promotional images, and the second is a golden hinged claw that I feel makes his arm a little too long. 
I would have preferred to see this piece retooled as a hook or something, but it's no big deal. Now, Cannonball is a Unicron Trilogy figure, and if you know anything about those, their posability leaves a little to be desired. Now, starting at the head, he has a nice, inoffensive swivel that rotates 360 degrees. It's a little loose over time, but it's pretty good. His shoulders, though, they're kind of a floppy mess. This one's kind of fine. It, it, it can hold a pose. It can move forward and backward until it hits the backpack. It can move outward. But this one... This one does get stuck in some poses. The friction is able to hold it in place, but if you just... This one has gotten really floppy over time, and I do believe it came like that, but I can't exactly remember correctly. He has no bicep swivels, but he does have elbows that bend 90 degrees, mostly due to transformation, and that's a pretty good range for the elbow. The wrists don't really have an effective joint, but they can move forward for some purpose. I prefer to use this more for the claw arm or the weapon arm, I guess. The claw does have an opening pincer, and that's the only reason why I had it on in the first place. He has nothing at the waist, mostly because he barely has a waist to begin with, and partially because he splits in twain at the ass. His legs can go pretty far out. That's a pretty good spread, though it does show that his ass is one massive cavity. His legs can move forward and backward until they bump into things, and moving the hip skirt forward helps a little bit, but not too much, considering you can't really go more than this. The knees don't even bend 90 degrees, which is a little bit of a shame, but these calves are so fucking huge that I don't really see how much more could be done about this. Finally, at the toes, his little pincers can kind of squeeze together as a, as a sort of claw cannonball. He's not perfect. He's okay. For a mold that was made in 2005, you should know what you're getting into, but he has a lot of joints that we still enjoy today. He's just missing a lot of the more advanced accoutrements that we've grown accustomed to over the past few years. I'm aware that there are many collectors out there who are typically averse to repaints and redecos. Even to those people, I wholeheartedly recommend Cybertron Cannonball. The engineering is kind of clunky and definitely a product of its time, but it still manages to be really fun to mess with. The color scheme is to die for, and couldn't be any more different from Red Alert if it tried, and it works so well. I really hope that someday Hasbro decides to dust off this character and give him a new mold all his own. Until then, I'll just have to enjoy this figure that's easily worth an astounding. If you liked this video or otherwise found it helpful or informative, then please subscribe for more reviews like this in the future. I'm hoping to reach 300 subscribers soon, and feel free to suggest topics for future reviews. When we return, I'll be joined by my good friend Mavstation, where we'll take a look at one of the most disappointing figures in the entire Studio Series lineup. This has been Kit Catastrophe. Transform and roll out.